you've been around the channel for a bit of time, you probably know that every single week we end up getting an update from Sledgehammer addressing some of the stuff we've already seen throughout the week and then also giving us a sneak peek at the week ahead within Call of Duty World War II. However, unfortunately, this week is going to be a little bit different in the sense of it's not going to be all that much in terms of what was given to us here for this update. Earlier yesterday, Sledgehammer put out a post on Reddit saying, hey, about tomorrow, it's not going to be exactly what you anticipate, but next week will be much bigger and we'll have a lot more to talk about at that point next Friday. So today's is kind of a sort of recap of some things, giving a little bit of a featured look at next week as well, but not as much as we've seen previously, but it also is something that I'm very hopeful and we'll discuss here in just a second because with this week being very small, it could open the door for a lot of things coming next week, which we'll talk about again here in this one. So that said, let's talk a little bit about the update and then what this might mean. So jumping right into it. Firstly, once again, they didn't even post an official blog post over on their blog. Instead, they only posted it over on Reddit with a community update thread there. The first thing they announced was that of the Liberty Strike community event. Of course, that launched earlier in the week on Monday, a surprise Monday release compared to when we normally see on Tuesday and Thursday as the release of things in World War II. But of course, it was something that launched earlier in the week, giving us not a necessary brand new HQ. That was one thing that was not a part of the update, but instead we ended up getting new collections, a brand new game mode in Wonderlust, in which we'll also see one shot as well as hardcore ricochet coming back at some point. That actually wasn't detailed in this post, so kind of surprised about that if I'm totally honest with you because I thought that we'd end up seeing some sort of preview with what's coming on Monday or Tuesday's refresh of the game itself and the brand new update. We also ended up getting new weapons, that of more variants for the ZK-383, which is the Division Prestige weapon for the Cavalry Division, which was given at the end of the month with the launch of the DLC and then also a week later for PC players. Then also the weapons of the Push Dagger, the AVS, and the Delisle. New camos, charms, all that kind of stuff. So we ended up getting a lot with that and Liberty Strike has now been in full force for about a week's time. And it's something that hopefully you guys have been taking advantage of it. I'm always excited for these new sort of events. I always find them to be a tremendous amount of fun. But after that, they detailed a little bit about the Weekend Warfare playlist, which is right now going on until Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's double division XP on all modes. It's not just one specific game mode. Recently, we've seen a lot of the double XP and double down playlists like that only in one specific area, usually a featured playlist of some sort. But this is across the entire board, whether you're playing the United Front Mosh Pit, whether or not you're playing standard TDM, whether you're playing hardcore search and destroy, you'll have double division XP on for all that. So take advantage of that if you guys have not, say, ranked up cavalry yet. You end up getting the ZK, obviously, if you prestige that. So it's a great way to do that. So take advantage if you can. Then they end up recapping a little bit of a hot fix that they rolled out over on Monday, in which just briefly talking about that, because we did mention it, it obviously gave the new Delisle, ZK, the AVS 36, and the Push Dagger. New weapon camos, charms, helmets, all that kind of stuff. It added the community challenge in for 260 million multiplayer match wins. Season 5 of ranked play starting up, implementing an AFK timer for infected, which has been a little finicky for some people, apparently. It's been kicking people that are actually active, but for the most part, I've heard only good things about it, but I have seen those isolated cases where it does happen to players that are actually playing the game. So, there's a lot of stuff there. I can leave the link in the description below if you guys want to check that out. The full detailed notes of all of that, but that was something they did recap additionally. The next thing I talked about is one that was kind of a recap, but also kind of looking forward to the future with what actually might be happening. So we're going to fuse a little bit of the recap and also things to look out for in this one, just in this section, instead of holding it off to the end, just because it's next up on tap. They ended up talking a little bit about the cavalry division concerns. They said, we've been reading your feedback and taking it all in. We've pushed through a fix today for the issue with the cavalry division shields, but we'll continue to monitor how they work in a live environment and keep you posted on the status of the division. We plan to do a live stream with some of our designers next week to talk about the cavalry division in more depth, so stay tuned. So by this, it really sounds like there's going to be some sort of adjustments here with this because they again mentioned that they're taking into consideration the feedback and concerns of the players and they know that it's not perfect at the moment. They know that right now it might be something that is a little bit more irritating than other things and so therefore I'm expecting a few things to come out of this. I think that one, this will tie in definitely to the camo leak that we saw yesterday in the video we talked about there where you can put camos on the actual division shield itself. And then additionally, we might end up seeing some more changes where 
where maybe it's not something tied specifically to just that of the division, or maybe it is and therefore you can't take a primary also in place of where your secondary would be. It's going to force you to play a secondary game with that shield, so therefore kind of taking a little bit of the viability out of it. And one thing that honestly I wouldn't be surprised that they do is that if they end up altering how the shield itself actually acts by maybe say giving it either one shot potential in the melee, but also making it destructible. I would not be surprised if that happens. I have absolutely no clue if it will, but with so many people voicing their concerns over it and seemingly the willingness to listen to it, it would not surprise me if that sort of stuff does actually happen in that live stream next week. And additionally, somebody over in this Reddit thread ended up saying that they should look at shaking up the meta of it and make the shields a little bit breakable or the wielder shouldn't be able to use a primary as a weapon and things that we already just discussed to which Sledgehammer actually even replied, we hear you, thanks for the feedback. We'll pass it along to our design team. Have a nice weekend as well. So while we can guess what we think will happen literally all day, we're not gonna know until next week at some point, but I would not be too comfortable with what we have right now. I would expect some slight changes, either large or again, maybe even small. We just don't know. I would expect some sort of change to be coming next week and a little bit of more detailing of that at some point in time, maybe Thursday, maybe Friday, maybe even Tuesday, who knows? But it is something that looks to be on the chopping block and will have some slight adjustment to that of the cavalry shield. But moving along a little bit further, we end up seeing a slight recap of the weekly weapon contract right now. Before jumping into next week's, they end up saying that, of course, the Blunderbuss is available from Butcher right now for 5,000 armory credits, and then it will task you with getting 20 shotgun kills with incendiary shells in a 35-minute time frame. So, that's something that really does actually play very well in regard to what the weekly challenge is of 75 incendiary rounds, but that's something that you can definitely do if you want. Again, the Blunderbuss is one that is fun to use, but not necessarily practical. Even if I didn't have a variance of it, I don't know if I would go for it, but regardless, that's up to you if you guys want to check it out. It's there for you guys. But also, they ended up giving us a little information on next week's weapon contract as well. It seems like we're now on a nice little pattern here of them giving us a week ahead with this kind of stuff, so you might be able to guess it, but we're going to be continuing what we ended up seeing from the Attack of the Undead collections. Next week's is the Stinger LMG. So that, again, will probably be available for 4,000, 5,000 armory credits. Maybe X amount of LMG kills in a 45-minute time frame, 55 minutes, who knows. Whatever it may be, though, but that is going to be one you can take advantage of, and that that's one that I definitely recommend you guys get. If you're not an LMG player, I understand if you pass it over, but it's a two-shot weapon at almost any range, and it's, with rapid fire, not half bad in terms of that fire rate as well. So definitely take advantage of that one if you guys can. And then they go on to mention a little bit of some zombie stuff. They ended up mentioning the hotfix they rolled out over on Monday as well, that doing a little bit to the zombies camo menu, and of course fixing that up a little bit. But they also mentioned then that the Moon Raven uniforms in multiplayer are still going on. That's something that you guys definitely want to take advantage of that. Again, there's four different challenges you can complete after you end up completing one. The next one will unlock and each giving you a brand new uniform. They all look absolutely awesome if you ask me, but it is something you got to put some time in to end up unlocking those. Those are available right now. Now again, that's kind of where we're at at the moment. Not all that much compared to what we may have thought. And again, I was really expecting some cool stuff, but unfortunately we ended up getting yesterday that mentioned that we wouldn't have all that big of an update, but would be coming next week as well. So I want to talk to you guys about that very briefly here before we wrap this up. The one big thing that I am very, very much so looking forward to next week, and I actually think might be a strong possibility, is that of Master Prestige Rewards. Now this was brought up out of nowhere a few weeks ago, saying that they'd be coming soon, and again it comes down to that thing of let sleeping dogs lie. Nobody at that time was really talking about that and really demanding more information, but they brought it up out of nowhere for some reason. Since then, we still haven't seen anything, but in this thread, they did bring it up when somebody did mention it, and they said, with the official Sledgehammer account, we're still working on these and we'll have more info for you guys soon. Now, soon, of course, is still that cookie cutter, vague information that we don't have anything to really pull from, but with what Sledgehammer already said was a much bigger update coming next week, it makes sense to put it in there. Something we've been waiting on for quite some time. Maybe tie that in with a slight division overhaul for the Cavalry Division and we actually get an update update to Call of Duty World War II, not just the blog update detailing things. Maybe this is a part of what is going to be coming very soon and maybe as soon as next week. 
Potentially, we might even see this mentioned on a live stream that we end up seeing with the developers next week on the Sledgehammer socials. Maybe that's something we see as well, but that is one big thing that I am very much so expecting here out of this, more so than anything else. There, of course, could be a ton of minor things that we could end up seeing, some things like, again, that prestige unlock token warning system, the final global launch for the flat gun event at headquarters, but I do think that, above all else, the massive prestige rewards will be something that is coming sooner than anything else. So I think that is going to be what we see next week as well on top of the information with Cavalry Division, so very much so looking forward to that, and also we end up seeing those things we talked about yesterday potentially happening if we do get an update itself maybe again the adjustment to the shield work and add camos to it where it's something you can actually use out instead of the cavalry division tied to that then also the other camo that was secret and hidden throughout that game file maybe all of this is finally detailed to us next week but this week was a much smaller update for world war ii but still an update nonetheless next week's should be very promising and i'm very much so looking forward to seeing what is on deck so stick it right here up on the channel if you guys want to stay up to date with all that kind of stuff we'll of course keep you guys up to date with anything you need to know about call of duty world war 2 but hopefully guys enjoyed the video that's we're gonna wrap it up if you guys did let me know your thoughts first thing in the comment section down below what do you guys hope to see out of next week's bigger event for world war 2 master prestige rewards a division overhaul with the cavalry division something else whatever it may be let me know your thoughts but hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did make sure you drop a like down below if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding call of duty world war 2 anything in particular regarding updates news information all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel so if any of that interests you, make sure that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter as well, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram as well, getting a little more active over there. So I'd love to catch you guys out there. If you guys want to follow on that front, that link is down there as well for you. But that said, hopefully you guys had a fantastic day. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. Take care and peace.